The speed of light, law of the universe or cosmic illusion. Asterisk, it is the fastest thing we know. The ultimate speed limit. A number so sacred that every equation, every telescope, every spacecraft obeys it. 299,792,458 meters per second. The speed of light. But is it truly an unbreakable law of the universe? Or just a rule we haven't yet learned how to bend? Long before telescopes, before satellites, before physics even had a name, light was already shaping our world. It warmed the earth, marked the seasons, and told ancient civilizations when to plant, when to harvest, when to pray. But for thousands of years, one question lingered, unanswered, unmeasured. Does light travel instantly, or does it take time to reach us? The Greeks debated. Empedocles believed light had a finite speed. Aristotle argued it was instantaneous. Without instruments to measure such incredible speed, the debate remained philosophical for centuries. In China, India, and the Islamic Golden Age, similar debates emerged yet all, lack proof. For millennia, the speed of light existed as a ghost unseen, untouched, unknown. Until the heavens themselves provided a clue. The first measurement Ole Romer 1676. Danish astronomer Ole Romer studies the eclipses of Io, one of Jupiter's moons. He notices the timing changes depending on Earth's position in its orbit. When Earth is moving away from Jupiter, Io's eclipses appear late. Conclusion: Light takes time to travel, and that time changes with distance. His rough estimate, about 220,000 kilometers per second, not perfect but revolutionary. For the first time in human history, the speed of light had a number. And with that number came a realization. The universe was not instantaneous. Every glimpse of the stars was a glimpse into the past. Chasing precision, Fizeau and Foucault 1849. Hippolyte Fizeau uses a rotating cogwheel and a beam of light reflected from a distant mirror. It by adjusting the wheel's speed, he calculates how long light takes to travel 8 kilometers and back. His result, 313,000 kilometers per second, remarkably close to modern values. 1850, Lyon Foucault refines the method with rotating mirrors, improving accuracy to 298,000 kilometers per second. In just two centuries, science had transformed a philosophical question into a precise measurement. But another discovery was about to reveal that light speed was far more than just a number, it was a fundamental law of nature. The equations that changed everything, Maxwell, James Clerk Maxwell formulates the four equations of electromagnetism. When combined, they predict the speed of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum, exactly matching the measured speed of light. Now this means, light is an electromagnetic wave. It also means its speed is determined entirely by the properties of space itself. The electric permittivity, epsilon, and magnetic permeability, mu, of the vacuum. The speed of light was no longer just something to measure, it was something the universe itself demanded. It wasn't the sun or the stars setting the pace, it was the fabric of reality. The death of the ether, Michelson and Morley, 19th century scientists believed light traveled through an invisible ether, like sound through air. 1887. Albert Michelson and Edward Morley build a precision interferometer to detect Earth's motion through the ether. They're expected to see differences in light speed depending on direction. A result. No difference at all, light speed is constant in every direction. It was a null result but one that shook physics to its core. If light speed didn't change, no matter how we moved, then the rules of motion were wrong. The universe had spoken, and it... Closing the chapter, it by the end of the 19th century, light speed was 1. Measured with increasing accuracy. 2. Linked to the very constants of space. 3. Proven to be the same for all observers. If these discoveries would set the stage for Einstein's revolution in 1905. What began as a curiosity about the heavens had become a cosmic law, one that would define not just physics, but the limits of what we thought possible. Einstein and the cosmic speed limit by the dawn of the 20th century, science was at a crossroads. The speed of light had been measured, confirmed, and tied to the fabric of space itself. 
But a simple, stubborn fact refused to fit into the equations of motion. No matter how fast you moved, the speed of light stayed the same. One young physicist, working in obscurity in a patent office in Bern, would take that mystery and turn it into a revolution. A universe in conflict. Physics at the time was divided. Newtonian mechanics ruled the macroscopic world. Maxwell's equations ruled electromagnetism. But they didn't agree on how speeds should add up. Example, in Newton's view, if a train moves at 50 km per hour and you throw a ball at 10 km per hour, the speeds add up. Ah, but light didn't follow that rule, it refused to speed up or slow down. The numbers didn't lie. The problem wasn't the experiments, it was our understanding of reality. The miracle year Albert Einstein, age 26, publishes on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. The paper introduces the special theory of relativity. Key idea, the laws of physics, including the speed of light, are the same for all observers, no matter their motion. To make this true, space and time themselves must flex and warp. Einstein didn't just change the rules, he rewrote the stage on which the universe plays. Time dilation and length contraction time dilation. Moving clocks tick slower relative to stationary ones. Example, an astronaut traveling near light speed ages less than someone on Earth. A length contraction. Objects moving at high speeds shrink along the direction of motion. If this isn't perception, it's built into the geometry of space-time. The faster you move, the more the universe bends to preserve the speed of light. Time slows, distances shrink, reality reshapes itself to keep the cosmic limit intact. Energy and the speed barrier, visual, particle accelerator footage, subatomic particles colliding. The famous equation E equals mc squared emerges from relativity. As an object approaches light speed, its relativistic mass increases. More and more energy is needed to accelerate it further. At exactly light speed, it would require infinite energy, impossible with any known technology. Nature doesn't forbid you from trying, but it makes the cost infinite. The closer you get to light speed, the heavier your burden becomes. Light as the cosmic speed limit, it's not just light, C is the maximum speed for any causal influence. Even gravity's changes propagate at C. Information cannot move faster without breaking causality, the fundamental order of cause and effect. The speed of light isn't a property of photons, it's a property of the universe. A built-in safeguard that keeps time flowing forward and events in order. Closing the chapter A by redefining space and time, Einstein didn't just explain light's constancy, he revealed a deeper truth. The universe has a maximum speed, woven into space-time structure. And this insight would open the door to the space-time continuum and, later, to the theory of general relativity. The speed of light was no longer a mystery to be solved, it was a law to be honored. And in honoring it, we began to glimpse the true shape of reality. The light cone, defining possibility, every event in the universe has a light cone, separating. Future possibilities, events that can be influenced. Past events, what could have influenced this point? Elsewhere, regions outside the light cone that cannot interact without breaking causality. And the speed of light sets the boundaries of cause and effect. No particle, no message, no force can travel outside this cone. The universe has a built-in speed limit that protects the order of events, ensuring that cause always precedes effect. 